Hello, and welcome to the discussion of the City of Springfield's Community Police Hearing Board. Uh, my name is Talia G. I'm the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer for the City of Springfield, and I'd like to introduce my guests that are here with me today. Hi, I'm Linda Karen, and I'm a member on the City's Police Hearing Board. Good evening. My name is Alicia Days, and I'm Deputy City Solicitor for the City of Springfield. Thank you for those introductions. <clears throat> so I'd first like to start off with a over a, a general question of what is the Community Police Hearing Board? It's, it's a nine member board that um, looks at and reviews citizens' complaints. If a citizen feels a police officer or someone's done something wrong, they can file a complaint and it will come to us to review and um, either hold a hearing or send it to the commissioner. And what do you do as a member of that board? Um, I do the reviews. We have it's nine members. It's broken up into three teams. So there's always three members to do a review. And uh, we get contacted by the IIU. Um, they present us with the full investigation. If there's recordings, we view the recordings, um, videos, 911 calls, things like that. Um, and then once we, the three of us, discuss it, we decide if it's going to go further to a hearing for more information um, or more discipline, more um, information about what, what the complaint is. Um, or we, we can send it back to IIU and they'll investigate it further if we find that's needed. Very seldom do we find that. And, um, or we can send it to the police commissioner to address as she sees fit. Attorney Days, what's your involvement mm -hmm. with the board? Well, currently my involvement with the board, and it's evolved over, I guess, a period of about 18 months, but currently I prosecute excessive force complaints. That was my most recent role with CPHB. Um, and then the concern, of course, during those complaints is to make sure that citizens have a voice and that they feel like there's been wrongdoing by the police. Uh, and of course, excessive force, as it's defined, is force anything that exceeds what is reasonably necessary to bring someone into custody or to secure them. So that's been my role. Prior to that, my role was serving as the attorney for the CPHB and advising them and um, primarily helping them understand criminal law and so to give them a better understanding or more information to make a determination whether or not what the officer did was improper. Okay. And I don't know that we covered this, but can you explain how um, citizens are able to make complaints? They can, um, on the city's website, City of Springfield website, there's a whole article section about IIU and how to make complaints. You can also send in compliment forms or complaint forms. Um, you can email them, you can drop them off at the IIU office on Maple Street. You can go into Pearl Street, um, and, I, and you can, there's the form online you can submit online. Okay, and um, <clears throat> so you just described how a citizen is able to make that first contact with the uh, department to file a complaint. Mm -hmm. What happens after that complaint is filed? Um, do you want to answer that? Uh, it goes to the, the IIU um, internal investigation unit does um, an investigation of what the complaint pertains to. Um, and once they are completed, there's certain target dates they have to hit to make sure it's done in a timely fashion and um, it would come to us. The, the IIU department would contact one of the three teams and we would go in and review it. And if a hearing needs to be scheduled, we sent, we denote that on the, on the forms and then IIU would set up the hearings. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, if I can just chime yeah. in, I think another important thing about the internal investigation piece is that it affords citizens the opportunity to present witnesses or to be in contact with IIU to make sure that IIU has a clear understanding of what happened. Of course, the more information that they have um, during an investigation, they're better able to um, serve the citizen. Um, so that I think that's important, too, is that during that that 
investigation, investigatory period, that it's important that the complainer or the person who has filed the complaint is available and accessible to answer True. any questions that an investigator might have. And while we're on that topic about things that um, will help <clears throat> IIU um, in the investigation, you mentioned being available. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that will help IIU investigate these complaints so that the, um, the CPHB can review them as Linda just described? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, witnesses are important. So if in fact an incident uh, occurs and family members are there or other people that you know that um, you could provide their information to IIU, again, the, the goal is to have a thorough investigation. And to Linda's earlier point, I think sometimes what happens, not often, um, but what happens is as a result of a review, uh, the CPHB member might have a question and say, okay, well, was this investigated or did they talk to this person? Um, but if that information would come in as a normal course of business, it would be very helpful, especially in terms of expediting the complaint. Right. Did you have anything to add? Linda? No, I Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about how citizens are able to initially make complaints, and that information is on the City of Springfield's website, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, and then after those complaints are made, they're investigated by the Internal Investigation Unit. And then after that, the complaints are reviewed by the team of the CPHB member. Correct. At those, you already described <clears throat> what happens at those reviews. Um, so, what is the outcome of the of the review? Um, at the at the reviews, does the CPHB say yay or nay or? At what the reviews, um, we review the entire investigation and. Um, the either there, there's sometimes when there's no policies that have been um, violated. So um, the, although the um, actions may not have been to the person's liking, the policies themselves were not violated. So there's a few different options. We can we can say that we can tell the commissioner there were no policies violated. However, we may say he could have maybe the police officer he or she could have handled it differently or maybe there could be some more retraining. There's times when there's absolutely no violation um, and we, it would go back to the commissioner and to handle in her discretion. Um, if it's a more serious complaint, definitely um, use of force. I would tell you 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it goes to a hearing. Um, even, even if the investigation is thorough, um, if there's a use of force, the hearing, it just helps us to understand better with witnesses presented and, and evidence presented, um, what the outcome is. We would recommend at the review, um, we could recommend to the commissioner training or, um, and then at the hearing stage, it's totally different, but at the end, we would recommend what we thought the outcome should be. Can you describe um, what citizens can expect at a hearing? So um, at a hearing, um, the people present, would be um, the prosecutor or the person who is actually um, prosecuting the police officer or presenting evidence against the police officer. You'd also have an attorney present on behalf of the police officer. Um, <clears throat> most often, commonly, it's a union attorney and you'd have the officer, of course, has the right to be present. Um, the, the interesting thing about um, CPHB hearings is, of course, it's a preponderance of the evidence standard, right? So it's not reasonable doubt. So it's not like a criminal trial per se, but there is um, a level that it must be met in order to sustain the charges. Um, it's not open to the public. Um, there are, and we sequester witnesses as well, meaning that if there's three witnesses, one witness would testify, leave the room, next witness would come in and leave the room. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and evidence is presented. So the goal is, of course, um, there's a charge letter. So I'll step back a little bit. Once it's, once it's decided that there's gonna be a hearing, an officer will, will receive a charge letter. In that charge letter, it will delineate what he or she is accused of doing wrong. And so that evidence, all the evidence that flows from that is what's presented in that hearing. And then the board, after hearing the evidence, um, can either sustain or not sustain the charge. 
And at the conclusion of the hearing, if in fact any of the charges are sustained, what usually happens then is that there is a recommendation that's provided to the commissioner so that discipline can be meted out. And that discipline can flow from a verbal warning or retraining up to and including termination. And Linda, did you have anything to add about the hearing? No. Um, from your perspectives, are there any things that citizens can do to help um, present their case at the hearing or to assist in the prosecution at the hearing? Well, of course, we want people to be truthful. Yes. We want them to um, give show us, up. Show up, right? Which is, um, which is, you know, can present a problem at times. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing that we should make sure that people know is that. Um, when there are incidents um, that people feel that they've been challenged or treated wrongly, we can only substantiate what you say if you're present. And if you don't show up, it puts CPHB um, in a position where they can't hold someone responsible. And not that all officers are responsible because there are plenty of hearings where, to Linda's right. earlier point, that it may not have been exactly how you wanted it to happen, but the officer clearly didn't violate any of the departmental rules. So it's important that people show up, that once they make the complaint, that they're committed to following it through. And um, I understand it's, um, for some, it's difficult, right? You're caught up in the moment, you file the complaint, and then, you know, weeks, some weeks go by and you rethink, or maybe you say, well, maybe I don't want to go forward. But the importance of filing a complaint and following through really um, speaks to and helps us um, to make sure that we're um, transparent and that we're following through on these complaints, which I think is very important um, for the public. That's a good point, um, because there is a little bit of time, obviously, between the time you make your complaint mm -hmm. and the IIU does the investigation, and then it goes to the review, and, and then if a hearing is <clears throat> warranted, you know, so there is some time for afterthought. Sure. Um, so it is real important that uh, uh, um, they show up. I, I also know that um, some people may feel awkward because the hearings are usually in the conference room at the police headquarters, but that's changed. Hearings will be held um, off-site away from the police department. I know at times there were people mm -hmm, that kind sure. of felt, you know, you're making a complaint about the police department or someone, a member of the police department, and then you're walking into their home, if you will, mm -hmm, sure. um, to, to bring that case. So um, that's, that's a big change, which I think is a positive change for, for the hearings as they go forward. Mm -hmm. Any final words about the Community Police Hearing Board that you'd like the citizens of Springfield to know? Uh, I think it's a very diverse board. Um, there's nine members. The makeup is is um, good. It's a good mix of the city of Springfield, in my opinion. Um, and uh, and I think you know, as volunteers, uh, we work hard. That's why there's three different teams. So reviews, they're always getting done. Um, and then for hearings, all nine members are always attend. So uh, I think it's healthy for the city, and I think it's helpful. Um, to the citizens. Agreed. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to uh, this information session regarding the City of Springfield's Community Police Hearing Board.